Well, I'd love to stay around and chat, but I must make a move. You love it, don't you? If you're talking about the trial, it's hardly a love affair. Oh, duty, honour. Responsibility as the police commissioner. Since when does the police commissioner attend every day of a trial? I thought your job ended with the arrest. I used to think that too, but now I know differently. Oh, the DA needs you that badly? As it turns out, I have provided a rather important witness whose testimony is going to be crucial. Who? That's the door. Who? Yes, get the door. Come on. Let's go. Good morning, Holly. I hope it's not too early. Uh, no, no. We've been up for hours. What can I do for you, Grant? In fact, it was Holly I wanted to see. I need a favor. You see, I'm testifying today, and I don't think that Celia should be there. Why? Because I may have to say some things that could hurt her very badly. I see. You'll speak with her then? I think you'll agree it's for her own good. Uh, all right, I'll see what I can do. Thank you very much. Uh, Robert, I'm on my way to the courthouse now, if you'd like a ride. Oh, uh, no thanks, uh, Grant. I've got uh, something to discuss here with Holly. Of course. Thank you once again, Holly. Uh, good luck in court. Don't you dare tell Celia not to come. Robert, Celia has been hurt already, and I'm not about to stand around and watch it continue hurt, indefinitely. Is she? Hurt, is she? Well, that's what you think. Look at her. Talk to her. Well, hurt's a whole lot better than dead, which is what she could be if Grant gets off. Hmm? Assuming he's guilty. It's not an assumption. Innocent until proven guilty. That's how it works in this country, you know? Yeah, well, that's why this case is so crucial. But yet, it's just kind of difficult proving that, beyond a reasonable shadow of a doubt, to 12 impartial strangers. Are you listening to me? Yes, I am. But can't you leave Celia out of this? You know the answer to that question. Yes, I know, I know. Her testimony is, makes all the difference. Yeah, which is why I want her in court today, tomorrow, and for as long as it takes until she realizes it's her duty to testify. Isn't Grant Putnam enough? Oh, he's just one more doubt in the eyes of the jury. But you see, her testimony against her husband could seal this case up. You're like a hanging judge. It's my job. It's a vendetta. He's guilty. Then he'll be convicted without Celia. What if he gets off, though, huh? Huh? What if he gets off? What about Celia then, eh? Oh, go on. Don't give me that you're worried about Celia and what she's going through. We should get over it. She's not a pawn, you know. She's a person. She has a right to make her own decision. Yeah? So what are you going to tell her? That, uh, that she shouldn't go? Hmm? Don't worry. I'm going to represent both sides fairly and equally to her. I'm going to tell her that Grant Putnam wants her to stay away and you want her to go and she can make up her own mind. And you tell her that her life might depend on it. You tell her that, Oh, right? I'm sure she's aware yeah. of that already. Yeah, well, you... Uh, we'll see, Holly. We'll... We'll see, won't we, eh? We'll, we'll see who's right here, yeah. Yeah. And another th Mark, Holly, come on in. I didn't hear the Oh, I didn't have to ring it. Stella was outside watering. She told me to come right on in. Hi, Jimmy. Holly, how are you? Well, these haven't been the easiest of times. Well, they haven't. So what's bringing you here today? You just caught us. We were just out the door. Yeah, I was going to take Celia on a ride out in the country. Oh, well then, Grant Putnam's offer won't mean much to you. His offer? Well, actually, it was a request. He, the district attorney, is putting him up on the stand today, and he stopped by and asked that you not go to the courthouse today. Why? He feels certain that things will come up that would be upsetting for you. Oh, well, certainly nothing that ever happened between himself and me. No, I think he means more things that he's going to be forced to say about Grant. I mean, your Grant, the, your husband. Then he is going to testify against him. I don't think for or against is the issue here. Robert made it sound like Grant Putnam has some new and damaging evidence against your Grant. And Grant Putnam knows how much you've been through and feels like this would be adding insult to injury. I agree, Celia. You don't know what he might say up there. No. No one does. That's why I have to go. You know, it, it, it 
It might turn out to be another humiliating experience for you. I have to know what's going on. Read the transcripts later. No, hearing it in person is the only way to understand it. Seeing it on a page is... I'll just never know how it was said, and inflection is everything. See here, just because Robert has the lofty title of police commissioner does not mean you have to do everything he says, believe me. And you... What, what Grant Putnam might say up there could be devastating to you. you remember Tanya's testimony. I'm still going. Why? Because my husband is on trial. What about what your friends think? Does it not matter to you? I'm doing this because I have to. Not because Robert wants me to, or because you and Grant Putnam don't want me to. I'm doing it because I feel an obligation. And I know the right thing for me to do is be in that courtroom today. Okay? She'll answer all questions later, okay? Just take, take it, it easy. easy. All right, thank you. Ah, glad you could make it, Celia. I hope I'm not too late. Just a small recess, is all. All right. Hi, has Putnam understand yet? Yeah, he's on a stand now. The uh, prosecutor's just putting him through the paces, and it's up to Jake for the cross-examination. What has been said? Not to worry. Putnam's been excellent. This Jake's looking like theory. He's got him nowhere. There's always been that question. Well, as you recall, I looked into the possibility of Putnam impersonating uh, Grant and couldn't find any evidence to substantiate it. What if Jake has? If he has, he's keeping it to himself. And that's all. The recess is over. Please, everyone return to the courtroom. Thank you for the ride. Thanks for the Good luck, huh? Mrs. Scorpio, is there anything you wish to say at this point? No comment. Thank you. I hope she knows. I hope she knows what she's doing. She'll be okay. Look, uh, Holly, would you have coffee with me? No, thanks. How about some tea? No, I'm, I'm gonna wait here. The coffee and the tea are just an excuse. I really think that we should talk. In reference to see you? Yeah. Okay. How about Kelly's? Sure. Bye. You betcha. How about Here's the menus? There and you go. we'll let you know what in a little bit, okay? Okay, just holler. I'll be over here. Okay. Okay. Let me know when you're ready. I suppose we shouldn't really worry too much about Celia. I mean, she's always been very good at bouncing back. You took her back uh, a long way, don't you? Mm, finishing school in Europe. You really care about her. I can see that. Well, I suppose when you know somebody for a long time, you instinctively want to protect them. I wonder why that is. Fear of losing them or not wanting to see them hurt, like with a child. She sure has that quality, doesn't she? You know, it's funny. <laughs> when we were at school together, she had this obsession with wanting to be grown up. I mean, the rest of us were quite happy to be daddy's little girls for as long as we possibly could, but she wanted to be a grown up. She tried harder than any of us, but she still kept that little girl quality. Come on, is there anything wrong with that? No. Men love it. Look at the two grants, they're both enamored with her. Look at yourself. Wait a second. Wait a second. I wouldn't call myself exactly enamored by her. I would. That is exactly what I want to talk to you about. Now, Holly, you got the wrong idea about me. Now, I care about Celia, but the same way you do. I want to protect her. That's all I want. But there was a time... Yes, I know. I know. I know there was a time I was in love with her and I did some crazy things. I'll say. Stupid things. But when I found out that I couldn't have her, I substituted those feelings. I substituted those feelings for feelings of friendship. But why? Most men in, in that position would feel resentment. So what you're saying is that uh, I, second, I settled for second best. I couldn't have her as a lover, so I decided to have her as a friend. Mm. You put it very well. Well, it's not true. I admire her. And anything I see her do is because I want to see her have what's best for her. In other words, you have no ulterior motive? No, I don't. Well, that's very 
refreshing, but I don't see what that has to do with me. Holly's got everything to do with you. Sheila doesn't have many friends in Port Charles. She has some family, but not many friends. And I think that the two friends she does have should get along. At least try to get along. Mm, I'll admit I don't like arguing in front of her. So let's not do it. At least let's try not to do it in front of her. Well, we can make an attempt, see what happens. I know you'd understand. I'm still going to say what I think, though. Nobody's asking you not to. Let's just try to keep our act together in front of her, okay? Okay. Good. Now that that's out of the way, I'm starving. How about if I buy you some lunch? We'll go Dutch. No, 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 no. I'm buying. I'm buying. I don't want to hear anything about it. Uh, Rose? Yeah. Can we order, please? Sure. Bet. We're going down. No, we're not. I'm, bu I'm buying this. What, what is it with the rope? Well, I'm glad you asked. You see, I got the word <laughs> from the city. Unless someone can change the plans, this half of Kelly's is scheduled for demolition to uh, make room for the new waterfront housing development project they're bringing in here. No. Are you kidding? I'm not kidding. What? Oh, can't you fight it? Hey, I'm trying. I hope that means you're getting yourself a good attorney. Well, I did have Jake, but now I've got John Everett. Oh, the ex man Uh-huh. They say he's good. Yeah, too bad it's not Jake, though. Well, Jake really wanted to take the case, but he's just so tied up with his granny under his trial. Uh, so is everybody, yeah. it seems. It seems like everybody in this town is involved in that trial one way or another. Uh, all we can hope for is that it's over with soon. Oh, don't count on it, Rose. The way it seems, that trial might go on forever. Uh, the state calls Robert Scorpio to the stand. Uh, Mr. Scorpio, if you come forward. Uh, Mr. Putnam, you may step down, but we ask that you stay in the courtroom for possible cross-examination at a later time. Yes, sir. I will remind Mr. Scorpio that he is still under oath. The prosecution may proceed to the question. Mr. Scorpio, you heard Mr. Putnam's accusation, did you not? I heard it. Is there anything that you can tell the court that would support that accusation? I have the proof you're looking for. Please continue. The Grand Putnam came to me with this information about a week ago. He claimed that he uh, identified the three people that were in the hotel room and who tried to abduct him. Was Grant Andrews one of those three people? Yes, he was. Though at the time his name was Andre Chern, the DVX spy. Was Mr. Putnam able to identify the other people in the room? Yes, he was. A woman agent, now deceased, a man named Fletcher, currently doing time in a New York prison. That's a lie. I had nothing to do with that end of the operation. What did you do when Mr. Putnam came to you with this revelation? Well, I was a bit skeptical at first, so I checked it out. By talking to the other DVX agent, Fletcher? He was interviewed in prison by both myself and Ted Ballantyne from the World Security Bureau. What did you learn in that interview? Fletcher admitted to being in the room along with Grant Andrews, and that together they planned the death of Grant Putnam. Do something. Objection, Your Honor. This is hearsay. Objection overruled. What was that plan? To throw Grant Putnam off a cliff. Did Fletcher say that Grant Andrews was involved in carrying out that plan? Yes, he did. He maintained that both Andrews and himself threw Putnam off the cliff. You're a witness, Counselor. How did this Fletcher character end up in prison? He was arrested for espionage. What led to that arrest? He was turned in by a former DVX spy. By Grant Andrews, isn't that so? Yes, by Grant Andrews. In a deal made by Mr. Andrews with the WSB and the State Department, that he would turn over all the DVX co-spies in return for political asylum, isn't that correct? I believe that was the deal, yes. So, Grant Andrews blew Fletcher's cover, and now Fletcher is in prison, right? You could say that. So Fletcher hates Andrews, doesn't he? There's no love lost between them. No, no, I use the word hate. That's very important. He does hate him, doesn't he? You'd have to ask Fletcher. I'm asking you, Commissioner. Was the word hate used by Fletcher when talking about Grant Andrews? Frankly, I don't recall. Grant Andrews was never in that room in England. Fletcher only said that for revenge against the man who put him behind bars. Objection, Your Please Honor. Please, Commissioner, the whole testimony is based on hearsay. I have no more questions, Your Honor. 
Does the prosecution wish to redirect? We do not, Your Honor. Then before we adjourn, may I ask the prosecution if they are resting its case? No, Your Honor. The state reserves the right to call another witness on Monday. In that case, the court's adjourned until 9 a.m. Monday morning when the prosecution will present its final witness. This is a must situation. I have We're got to have Celia Ferrara work on it. She's all we've got at this point. Now, we've established the possibility, but we still oh, haven't established the motive. Oh, there wasn't much help. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks to Fletcher. Oh, I'll take the one side. Well, face it, Meyer may have been right. Fletcher may have told that whole story just to get even with Andrew. In that case, why did Putnam bring it up? Who knows? Our only concern is to get Celia on that stand. Mr. Chan. Celia. Listen, I want to explain. I want to explain to you today exactly what went on in that court in there. Well, it was pretty obvious. Grant Putnam said that it was my husband that tried to kill him yes. eight years ago. Yeah, but you see, the jury wasn't all that responsive to it. You don't think they believed him? Their evidence was circumstantial. I mean, as the DA says, if we don't get any tests from him providing motive, this guy could walk on us. You don't have to say it. You think that I'm the only one that can provide that? Conclusively, yes. You've got to get up there and state what you heard Tanya and Grant say on the night of the festival. What if I refuse to get up on the stand? Then we may lose this case. Now, are you prepared to do it? You've got to know quick. All right, all right, yes. I am willing to testify for the prosecution. Right. Good. Good.